Hello everyone and welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Today we're going to be talking about propagating Venus flytraps with flower stalk cuttings. I'm going to show you a sort of a pro technique and then as a bonus I'm going to show you kind of the lazy method that I use sometimes. The pro method tends to get a higher strike rate but the lazy method also works, just not as often. Before we get into the actual methods, let's go over some important facts when talking about flower stalk propagation. First off, it's really important to understand the difference between seed-grown Venus flytraps and propagated Venus flytraps. You can propagate a Venus flytrap from a leaf cutting or a flower stalk cutting. They also naturally divide from the rhizome. All of these methods produce genetic clones of the plant. If you have a cultivar and want to produce another genetic clone of that cultivar, you need to propagate it via flower stalk, leaf cutting, or allow the rhizome to naturally divide. If you allow the flower to bloom and it ends up getting pollinated and the seeds are produced, these are not genetic clones. You can get very genetic attributes when you grow a Venus flytrap from seeds. It's important to note that if you have seeds from a cultivar, you cannot list the new plant as that cultivar. You can say they're seed grown and then list the plant that they were previously, but it's unethical to now list the plant as a cultivar. If you're just a hobbyist and never plan on selling your plants, this probably isn't a huge deal for you. If you plan on swapping or selling your plants someday, it's extremely important for you to understand the difference between seed grown and propagated clones. I wanted to list a few pros and cons of flower stalk cuttings before we move on. Overall, my personal belief is that there are more pros to cutting the flower stalks, but that's just my opinion and everyone is entitled to such. Many people prefer to let the fly traps flower and harvest the seeds, while others just like to let them grow and never plan on harvesting the seeds in any way. Whichever you choose is entirely up to you and I completely support it. To help you make the best choice for your plants and situation, let's go over some pros and cons of cutting the flower stalks. One of the most controversial topics when talking about flower stalk cuttings is always whether or not it's good for the plant to cut the flower stalk off, or will my flytrap die if I let it flower? This is a rather nuanced topic and I'd like to take a moment to explain. If you have a flytrap that seems to be in perfect health and is growing great, the health of your plant is probably not going to be affected at all by choosing to cut or not cut the flower stalk. Flower stalks do not kill the Venus flytrap. However, if you have a sickly Venus flytrap that you recently rescued or maybe it's been attacked by pests and now you're trying to revive it back to health, I strongly recommend nipping those flower stalks off the moment that you see them. The plant does divert its energy into growing the flower stalk. Some struggling plants just can't spare that extra energy. It's not that the flower stalk kills it, it's that it's taking a portion of the energy from an already struggling plant. Also, it's worth noting that flytraps typically flower in the spring or when they're waking up from dormancy. If you have erratic flowering behavior, it could be a sign of your plant struggling. Often, Venus flytraps will flower before dying in a last attempt to carry on its life. This is where you will hear the term death flower. As you can see, it's not black and white. The flower itself doesn't kill the plant, but rather, the flower is a result of the plant already being on its way to dying. But remember, this is only when you see erratic flowering behavior. It's 100% normal for flowers to pop up at the start of the growing season. These are not death flowers. I personally like cutting my flowers for a couple of reasons. Number one is that it's a great way to get some genetic clones. Especially with my better cultivars, I really like to cut the flower and see if I can make some babies. Technically, even with the healthy Venus flytraps, cutting the flower is better for the long-term health of the plant. All that really means though is that the leaves and the traps that grow later in the growing season might grow a little bit bigger and the plant might grow a little more vigorously. That energy that's spent making the flower will be put toward making bigger and more vigorous growth. Another pro that I've only just discovered this season is that aphids are really attracted to the flower stalks. Even before blooming, I've noticed lots of aphids just on the flower stalks. Since cutting the flower stalks, I've only noticed a couple of aphids on my plants. It seems that they're drawn to the flowers, you'll notice them really huddled around the top part where the flower eventually blooms, and this is even before it blooms. Removing the flower stalks has definitely helped the Venus flytraps be less attractive to aphids. The only real cons, in my opinion, is that you don't get to see the flowers bloom, although depending on when you cut the flower stalks, they still might bloom even after cut. The only reason it's a bummer is that it's really fun and satisfying to create and collect Venus flytrap seeds. It's a pretty cool experience that you obviously miss out on if you cut your flower stalks. Maybe I'm missing some of the pros and cons to leaving the flower stalks, 
Sound off in the comments below and let me know what I missed. Real quick, before I jump to the pro method for propagating these flower stalks, let me show you how you can get your hands on your very own Venus flytrap or other amazing carnivorous plant. I'm so excited to be teaming up with California carnivores. They are one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year-round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery that you fall in love with. On top of that, they have been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter Bug Eater at checkout. That's B-U-G-E-A-T-E-R, Bug Eater. I have links in the description and the pinned comment so you can head on over and pick out the perfect carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and head on back to the video. All right, now that I've bored you to death with the intricate details of the cut or not to cut, let's talk about the process of getting these cut flower stalks to produce some flytrap babies. The first step of this process seems fairly obvious, but we do have to cut down and harvest the flower stalks. Don't put too much thought into this process. Just make sure that your cut is as low as you can get it without bothering the other leaves coming up. Best practice is to make sure you sterilize your scissors in between each cutting. This helps reduce the spread of any potential disease. If you're making multiple cuts like I am, have a plan. It's easy to get all these mixed up, and if you do that, you'll have no idea which flower stalk belongs to which cultivar. I had all my pots ready to go and labeled before I even started cutting. This way I can set the cuttings on the corresponding pot to avoid getting them mixed up. You can see here that all mine are labeled and ready to be planted. When you're cutting the flower stalks, you're going to notice that some of them are really soft and kind of floppy, while some are kind of hard. The type that I see with the highest strike rate is usually right in the middle. Not too hard, not too floppy, just kind of somewhere in the middle. I've also noticed that the thicker the flower stalk, the longer it'll live and have a chance to strike. With that being said, I've had flower stalks of all types strike, so I don't like giving up on any of them. Best time to cut a flower stalk for propagation is usually before they bloom. It's hard to predict how tall flowers will eventually get, some grow a foot or so above the plant. If you're patient and wait a while, you might get yourself 12 inches of flower stalk. I do like to cut it well before that though, usually when the flower stalk has reached the size of my fly traps, or maybe just a little bit taller. They seem to be primed for cutting and planting. There is some wiggle room there though. I've even had a flower stalk strike after flowering although my strike rate was significantly lower. If cut before they bloom and planted vertically, many of these flower stalks will actually continue to bloom even after they're cut. Today I'm going to be going over what I consider the pro method of propagating flower stalks. The pro method is going to work at a higher percentage, more of your stalks will strike. However, it's a much more involved process. I'm also going to show you the lazy method for propagating flower stalk cuttings. It won't strike as often, but it's a super easy way you can try to make some Venus flytrap babies with minimal effort. I've learned that most people cut their flower stalks and just toss it. I have a much better solution for you on the lazy method. Before we plant the flower stalks, I just wanted to go over my substrate really quick. I use my own personal mix of peat moss, perlite, and crushed glass. If you want, for cuttings, you can leave out the perlite and just go with the glass or sand and peat moss mix. I'm also going to be selling this mix here really soon. It's made with a lot of love and care, and it's one of the best substrates you can get for growing Venus flytraps and other carnivorous plants like Saracenia and Pings. My store isn't quite open, but it will be very soon. There's a good chance if you check the description, it'll be up and running. Go ahead and go get yourself some premium substrate. Each flower stalk needs to be cut down to about one inch pieces. If you have a piece that's just under two inches, I recommend using the one larger cutting versus cutting it down into smaller than inch cuttings. I seem to have better success with one inch or bigger. Anything smaller than that seems to have less chance to survive long enough to get a good strike. All right, now let's go ahead and jump into the pro method here. There's essentially two ways to plant the flower stalks. You can stick them in the soil vertically, or you can lay them down on their side. Honestly, I haven't noticed that one really works much better than the other. The only reason I like them on their side better is that you can watch the traps form and grow oftentimes. With the vertical ones, you often don't see the traps until they're fully formed and start to shoot out from where the flower stalk is buried. The way that I decide which pieces to lay on their side versus which pieces I'm going to plant vertically is usually I'll take the stalks with the flowers and bury those vertically. I do this because oftentimes these flowers will still bloom. You can still enjoy the flowers even after they've been cut off. The bottom part of the stalk I like to lay on its side. I don't know that either of these ways are significantly better than the other, and honestly I haven't really noticed that either are. Maybe someone out there who has studied and recorded their findings with these two methods can sound off in the comments and maybe give us some, some idea of which one of these methods is better. But for myself personally, they both seem to strike at about the same rate. For planting the flower stalk vertically, if the flower stalk is stiff enough, you can just push the flower stalk down into the substrate. I typically bury them with just the flower parts sticking up. This allows them to still get some lighter sun. If the flower stalk is a little more floppy, you might have to pre-make a hole. 
As you can see here, I'm using a pencil to help make the hole. The pencil was probably just a little too big. Sometimes they would kind of go down a little bit too far. So if you can find something that's just a little bit smaller than that, it'll be even better. You just want to find something that can help you pre-make that hole so it's easy to put the flower stalk into the ground. Planting them on their side is just a little bit trickier and requires a little bit more work. You want to create a small groove so the stalk can sit down into the substrate just a bit. Once it's in the groove, I like to cover both ends with the substrate. In the past, I've noticed that if you don't bury the ends, it'll kind of twist and curl up. The more of the stock that's in contact with the substrate, the better the chance it has to strike. When it curls up, often both ends will lose contact with your soil. Covering the ends with some substrate usually stops it from curling up. Also, make sure that the bottom and both sides are mostly covered in substrate with just the top of the stock sticking out a little bit. You want the majority of the stock in contact with the substrate, typically where it's in contact is where the magic happens. Once you've carefully planted all of your flower stalks, it's time to top water. I don't top water often, maybe once a month, but right now it's not really about the watering. It's more about helping these newly planted stalks come into complete contact with the substrate. If you just leave them be and bottom water them, many of these don't come into contact with the substrate like they should with the hole that they're in. Especially if you're like me and used something that was a little too big to make the holes. You can see how much adjusting I need to do here after top watering. This is perfectly normal and actually helps the stalks be in better contact with the substrate. Make sure your planters are in the tray while you're doing this. The water is going to leak out the bottom and it gets pretty messy. As a quick side note, just make sure that you're giving your flower stalks distilled RO or rainwater. Once the fly traps start to root, water with any minerals will burn and kill the roots. Avoid tap water, very similar to how you care for your adult Venus fly traps. Only use the same water that you're using for your adult fly traps. For your flower stalk cuttings to have the best chance at striking using this pro method, you're going to need a way to give them some extra humidity. I really like using these dollar store trays. They're super easy. I just put my planters in the tray and then cover with the plastic lid. This keeps the moisture in and keeps everything wet all the time. The cuttings do have a higher success rate with more humidity and moisture. They'll be getting significantly more water and moisture than you would give a normal adult Venus fly trap. Once they strike and start growing, we'll slowly back off the humidity and start treating them more like the adult plants. But for now, keep them covered. I'll pull this off for about an hour a day so they get some airflow. This helps cut down on the mold and the mildew. Honestly though, you might see a little bit of white mold start to grow on the top. I just remove these little pieces as I see them. I'm going to keep these cuttings in a grow tent under my grow lights. I put the cuttings on the edge of the light. I try to avoid the really hot direct light, which ironically is right where I want my adult Venus fly traps. Right now, they're getting about 10 hours of light per day. They can be kept out in the sun. However, you'll really need to monitor their temperatures. The sun can heat up a humidity dome really quick. If they're too hot, they're less likely to strike. I've had much better success in more controlled environments under grow lights. If kept in the sun, I'd recommend morning sun and then to put under a shade cloth or an indirect light for the hotter afternoon. They do need light, but not super strong light while they're propagating. I like to keep water in the tray all the time. While I'm waiting for them to strike, I never let them dry out at all. Lots of moisture, lots of water. Here's an example of a flower stalk that I cut and threw into a small planter about three months ago. You can see it finally struck and now a baby is growing. This is just a typical, which is why there's no label. But you can kind of see what to expect in the next 60 to 90 days with your cuttings. After your flower stalks have been sitting for a couple of days, here's what it should look like. You can see how much water it's keeping in there. They all look very green and healthy still. As long as the flower stalk is green, there's a chance that it will strike. I don't give up on them until they are dead and black. Keep in mind, it can be dead and black on the top, but still green underneath where the substrate is and where it's buried. I also just trimmed my red dragon and Amptoboros flower stalks and wanted to add them to the rest here. Real quick before we jump into the lazy method, I wanted to take a moment and thank you so much for being here. If you're finding this video informative or entertaining, please consider pouring some water on my like button and subscribing to my channel to help it grow. I'm trying to start my own carnivorous plant nursery someday and you being here, liking, subbing, commenting, and even just watching the video all the way to the end are ways of really helping support my dream. Thank you so much. Okay, I'll stop yapping. Let's get to the lazy method for propagating Venus flytrap flower stalk cutting. Okay, let's go ahead and bounce over to the lazy method now. There's much less going on with this method. You cut the flower stalks and harvest them in the same way that we talked about before. This time though, we're not taking them anywhere. We're gonna go ahead and plant them right in the pot with the existing plant. You basically just find a vacant spot in your planter and follow the same steps that we outlined before. For this method, I recommend planting the flower stalks vertically. 
It takes up less room, and since these will be getting the same care as your adult Venus flytraps, it seems to be a much more effective method for getting the flower stalk to strike. You won't be able to provide them as much humidity as the cuttings with the Pro method. With less humidity, the stalks that stay below the ground seem to live longer, making the vertical planting method more effective. The lack of extra humidity, in my opinion, is the reason that this method is less effective. However, I've had many flower stalks hit using this method. You can also use the advanced lazy technique. If you have room, you can place the small dome and create a mini terrarium for your little cutting. If you wanted to, you could even cluster several cuttings in the same area to make them easier to dome. This extra step will give a ton of extra moisture and humidity without changing the care for your main plant and should help them have a much higher strike rate. I just used this little plastic sauce container thingy. Yes, sauce container thingy is the scientific name. I keep all my adult plants outside, so I make sure to give it some breathing holes. The risk with doing this is it will keep the moisture in, but it also keeps a lot of the heat in. If they get too hot, they won't strike. So you can even maybe keep it on at night and during the morning and then remove it in the warmer afternoon sun. Reapply come evening time when the sun goes down. Usually, a strike will happen anywhere from 60 to 90 days, so don't give up. I've had strikes happen on flower stalk cuttings that looked mostly dead. If there's any green at all, it has a chance. Once your fly traps strike, I recommend keeping the current conditions for another 90 to 120 days. Once they get a little bit bigger, you can start to slowly remove the humidity dome and allow them to dry out a little more on top. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, I'm going to be posting update videos with these cuttings. Whether they strike or they don't, I think it's worth showing you what the progress looks like. Hopefully, my next video about these cuttings will be some baby fly traps starting to pop up. Comment below and let me know if you cut or just leave your flowers. If you're going to propagate your cuttings, which method do you use? Do you go with the pro side or the lazy side? Or maybe you do your own method. I'd love to hear about it. I'd also love to hear about your successes and failures. Let me know what's working and what's not. Here's a video popping up on the screen right now with my total Venus flytrap care in under 10 minutes. Make sure you're providing the right kind of care for the flytraps when they get older. If I missed anything, please ask your question in the comments and I'll do my best to get to those. Make sure to like and subscribe and thank you so much for being here. I really hope to catch you in my next video. Bye!